All right, we are live. How are you doing? I'm doing well, man. Thank you for uh, having me. How are you doing? Uh, I'm good. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, this is actually my second talk today on this topic. So um, oh, okay. it'll, it'll be interesting to see if I um, mix up what I remember I've said before versus now. But um, okay, so so okay, so you did a live stream with uh, Vegan Power Lab. And I watched that, and that that reaction was you guys talking about Alex O'Connor's most recent um, uh, discussion on veganism for his AMA. Yep. Um, yep. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And um, okay. And so I I uh, took some notes, uh, and I just have some questions for you because um, I think a lot of people misunderstand Alex, and I I, I kind of want to like help Alex decide with this. But um, before we get to that, I'm curious. What is your definition of veganism? Like wh when you call yourself a vegan, I know a lot of people will use um, like super old school definitions. Some people will mm -hmm. use a standard definition in the dictionary, but the majority of people use the vegan society definition. And I just wasn't sure if that's the one you use for yourself. Um. Well, so yeah, I guess, and you go by Carson, I'm guessing, right? Uh, yes, or... correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if I remember it correctly, the vegan society definition is uh, not using animal products or whatever uh, as much as like practically possible or as much as like what's practical, right? Um, which I think has a lot of holes. So, oh, thank you. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I, veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as possible and practicable all forms of animal exploitation um all forms of exploitation and cruelty to animals. And then the, the rest kind of doesn't matter. But um, yeah. So, so what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, the definition is decent. Um, I do think that that portion as far as is possible and practicable, I think that is really the flaw of this definition because mm. that can mean a lot of different things right? Um, okay. To a lot of different people. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, the, where I come when it comes to veganism, or where I'm coming from, when, when, when I say I'm vegan, um, I think that animal rights is a logical extension of human rights. So very similar to like the vegan gains definition. Um, and I do I just reject, all, you know, all forms of exploitation to animals. Um, I, I, I just don't know what that portion where it says as far as possible or practicable means. So I, think what, I think what people mean by that would be if a vegan was stranded on an island and they had to eat, if they knew they'd get survived or they'd get um, found in a certain amount of months, but they had a feeling that if they didn't eat uh, some animals on that island, that they would die, that the practicable part would just uh, essentially it's just saying it's necessary, necessary, um, for whatever given situation. Yeah. I think that where I'm coming from is even if you're on an Island, like I don't, I don't, I never find it justified or moral to take another individual's life or, uh, violate another individual's rights for your own benefit. Now that doesn't mean that I would necessarily, again, in that life and death situation, that doesn't mean I would necessarily judge others or maybe, you know, depending on my, how strong my will to live is, maybe I would cross my own morals or my own values. But um, there's a difference between like doing something that you're against because you are selfish and want to live that badly mm -hmm. versus like being okay or like setting a precedent that, oh, um, exploitation or violating somebody's rights is okay in a survival situation, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and like so um, – if I go up to a random five-year-old and break their pinky, I, I find that immoral. I think that's immoral. But if I was in a weird hypothetical situation where breaking a five-year-old's pinky saved my wife's life, I would break that five-year-old's pinky. I'd feel bad. It's immoral still. But I would I would commit that act because it, it seemed uh, reasonable to me even though immoral. Is that the basic idea of – Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the action is still immoral. Like you – breaking a five-year-old pinky is still messed up and still wrong, but you're willing to live with the wrong action or you're willing to, you know, have that on your conscience to save your wife's life. Yeah. 
essentially. Yeah, yeah. gotcha. Okay, and um, okay, and I, I think I, I think I completely agree with that. Um, we can each decide what we think of is an immoral or an immoral act, and then we, we might not act upon it, but we still have that moral framework. Um, so I think. I would, I, I'm not sure with most people with veganism, if they, they probably view it somewhat like that. Um, the, the thing I want to kind of get down to, cause the thing that threw me off the most was your reaction to Alex saying in the video, um, I wrote it down. Um, sure. Alex said, um, if you're causing unnecessary suffering and death, and mm -hmm. then you said veganism is not, um, trying to prevent all um, suffering and death. And so I wasn't sure if you were referring to your own thoughts on veganism or if you think that Alex is wrong, even when it comes to the definition that we see here that most vegans go by. Yeah, no, I think Alex is wrong based on my own feelings and based on the definition. Okay. So, so in, in it, what I'm gathering is um, mm -hmm. that he's just using a a simpler word for people to understand instead of using practicable. So practicable is, is basically saying necessary. But well, another, okay, sorry, sorry go, go ahead. ahead. No, you're fine. I was just going to say, because the, the term, if uh, you could repeat it also, but if I heard you correctly, he said that um, veganism is trying to reduce all unnecessary suffering to animals. And that's not what we're trying. That's not what veganism is. Ooh. Right. So, so that was what you said in response. And, th and that's, that's the thing when it comes to doing live things and responses, um, it's hard to keep track of each word or whatever. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I probably make this mistake so many times, but when Alex said, um, your, when you're causing unnecessary suffering and death. So he's referring to the idea of someone causing it, whether you're putting it in demand or doing the action yourself, mm -hmm. causing unnecessary. So unnecessary, like the practicable. Um, so I think he's just fitting that, that definition. Um, causing unnecessary suffering and death. Um, Yeah, I guess we it would be like the term causing, I guess we would have mm -hmm. to kind of flesh that out. Because, for example, um, would like does growing crops cause suffering and death uh, mm -hmm. for you? Does growing crops for humans cause suffering and death? I guess. Yeah, indirectly. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like um, it's that whole idea that if you're if you go and purchase beef, and then you eat it, um, you, you're eating it isn't causing it in a sense, you're purchasing it is only causing it in a sense, but that sense is that you're putting it in demand. So same thing would go if, if there's no way to farm um, crops that vegans would eat without there being um, some death, then, no. then purchasing those crops is causing it by putting it in demand in the same way that purchasing the beef is causing it. The, the difference is the, the vegan <clears throat> crops that are causing some deaths are causing tiny amount of death versus <laughs> large amount of death. But I'd say in both cases, um, there's causing happening. Well, but, but that's the thing is like, I don't think like for me and I, based on this definition, I don't think it implies that veganism is not a like, a num it's not about like the number of deaths, right? It's about the intentional exploitation and commodification of animals, right? So yeah. like, for example, if I'm on that desert island, right? And let's say it's me. Oh, um, oh can you hear me? Yeah, sorry. Oh. I meant to close out of that other screen and I closed out of you for a second, but. Oh, no problem, no problem. Yeah. So yeah, let's say I'm on that desert island and it's me and another individual, could be an animal, could be a human, whatever you want to go with. Um, mm -hmm. And there's only a, a finite amount of food, right? There's only a, a set amount of food. Mm -hmm. um, by me eating that food versus giving that food to that animal, right? Technically, yes, that animal will probably die in that process. But I did not exploit, I did not violate that animal's rights, right? I took the resources that were available, right? So we, you, you could call it competition for uh, resources or competing for survival. Um, mm -hmm. But I did not actually violate that animal's rights and kill them right i okay. they died indirectly because i took the resources but i view those actions as two two different things okay um, uh, i do too and i think that was a really good example can i give you a hypothetical sure okay so let's say um you are 
let's say someone, not you. Let's say um, Bob is in the forest and he has a gun. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's an apple tree and it has an apple on it. Mm -hmm. um, let's say Bob loves apples. He really likes that apple. And um, Bob does not need food. He has an endless amount of food. He has his own farm, actually. He just has like crazy amount of food. He doesn't need any extra food, but, but mm -hmm. he loves apples. And specifically the apples in this forest. He goes to this forest. There's the apple tree with the apple on it. And a deer comes up. And a deer is about to eat that apple. Mm -hmm. Bob pulls out his gun, kills the deer. So the deer doesn't eat the apple. Because he tries to scare the deer away, but it won't leave. <laughs> He's just going to eat that apple. So he mm -hmm. shoots it. He kills the deer. Bob grabs the apple, eats the apple. He leaves mm -hmm. the deer and he takes off. Um, is there an issue here? Is Bob doing a non-vegan action? Yeah, I think the the thing about this hypothetical, um, and I'll answer it, but I think the thing is in this hypothetical, um, we know, like we know that there, we know like the calculation of what is the exact amount of food we need for survival and what isn't, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you're asking like, if there was a way to, calculate because it's an empirical claim right if there was a way to calculate okay if we grow this amount of crops this will feed exactly this amount of people and have exactly zero nutrient deficiencies i would actually be for regulating crop production right so mm -hmm. like for example in this hypothetical if what would you say bob was the guy's bob. name or whatever so yeah if bob did not need the apple and knew right was able to calculate uh, empirically or prove empirically that okay I have no nutrient deficiencies. I have all the food I need. Yeah, there is. There's no reason to shoot that deer in the head to take the apple. Um, okay. Yeah, if that makes sense. Because I, yeah, I no. think. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say. Um, so I, I like to use that example because um, I guess the same. It would be similar if if Bob knew that deer would come to eat the apple, and Bob created a poison that would attract deer. And that would make a, when a deer consumes it, the deer, let's say, would die a miserable death <laughs> or, or it doesn't even need to be a miserable death. It can just be a death or whatever. And so we could swap that out and have it be where the deer, when it comes to the tree. So Bob's not even there. He just left the poison. Mm -hmm. And some days no deer will come and no deers will be harmed. And Bob will just eat an apple. And then other days a deer will come, eat it and die. And so uh, the reason I like to use these examples is because when I first was discovering crop deaths, I my first and only thoughts whatsoever was just the idea of dumb mice and snakes getting caught up in a tractor. And then I learned more about it. There's rodenticides. So um, because they'll know that certain rodents will come out and um, eat some of the harvest, uh, they'll put rodenticides everywhere. And so we we knowingly to keep our products that we want to eat, um, we'll put these products out for, um, mice to come, they eat and they die. And I think it's complicated. Uh, we, uh, the detail of it mattering in my mind would be on a scale, depending on how much suffering there is from the rodenticide. Another thing is that like deer and elk will come and eat, um, crops and then, uh, farmers will have, um, hunters come in and shoot the deer and elk so they won't eat the crop. And mm -hmm. so those two um, are what the analogy you're trying to fit. And I think, I think they're comparable. Sure. I mean, again, like the, the biggest issue I have, Alex O'Connor is like, cause here's the thing amongst vegans or amongst like, once we establish that, okay, animals should not be exploited, bred into existence, killed for like, essentially their, their body parts, right? Their, their flesh. Once we've mm -hmm. established that, do I think that I, I, first of all, I, the crop agriculture system, like the industry, is well above my pay grade, right? I have no influence on that. But um, if I were to do research, uh, and I have, like like you said, I've learned about the crop deaths, do I think that there are ways we could vastly improve upon the crop agriculture system we have? Yeah, I'm sure there are, or there, is, there are ways, yeah. Um, just like with almost every other industry, right? Especially in a, in a profit-driven society or market or whatever you want to do. Uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, we have a lot of unnecessary products and a lot of things that actually aren't even beneficial for humans. They're there because people will pay for them, right? So yeah, I think there's a lot of issues with the system we have. But when we're discussing veganism in no way, like just because we have those imperfections in our system, and our, I would say it's more of a like a economical system, um, in no way does that justify 
the exploitation of animals, right? And Correct. I think that the problem with Alex's case is, and I even I even listened um, earlier before we did before I came on stream, I was listening to um, the talk Alex O'Connor had with on the what is it, the Trigonometry Boys or yeah. whatever Trigonometry podcast, and he does a great job of explaining the issues with factory farming, of explaining the issues with um, uh, animal exploitation in general. The problem I have is he can clearly do a great job of arguing, but he is not aligning his morals with his actions, right? He's not a vegan. Mm -hmm. He's not, you know, uh, avoiding um, contributing to, to the animal agriculture system. And I don't see how that's justified, especially some uh, in the case, uh, or sorry, especially from uh, a pos the position that Alex O'Connor is in, where he has money, he has resources, mm -hmm. he has time. Um, so I, I just don't see how that could be justified at all. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you, um, on a lot of that. I, I made a, I made a note here that, um, cause you had mentioned that when Alex said him not being vegan is for practical reasons. And then you were saying that if he's, if he's doing it for practical reasons, then that's going to be factory farmed food like like if he's just uh at a, a doing a speech and it mm -hmm. just needs to grab food really quick there's no way that quick food is going to be non-factory farm so i think that's a very good point you made i agree with a lot of the things that you did say in the video but i think there are some complications now part of this is alex's fault um I don't know if anybody owes anybody explanation, but I personally wish Alex would explain himself a little further, not just why he feels like he practically can't be a vegan, but also I want to know how not vegan he is. I think yeah. a lot of us um, view it as you're either vegan or you're not. And clearly we can see with what we're talking about with the, the cropland, where even though we can't be perfect, um, we can see we can see that there's certain levels like if somebody somebody that just eats typical crops that let's say they one animal a year dies because of the amount of crops they eat where somebody else um, grows their own crops and f because mm -hmm. of that one animal dies every two years they're twice as good <laughs> in a sense uh, as far as their outcomes not in, not their intentions but mm -hmm. um so so there's no perfect way to do it which is why I think um, when us vegans talk, we should we should focus on various uh, areas of there's there's the worst you could do of anything, and then the best you could do, and all the in between. So in the same sense that um, I, I I just wonder if Alex is like ninety nine percent vegan, or if he's like a lot of ex vegans where they went from being vegan to just being a typical meat eater. Because if Alex is just eating like a couple simple products that happen to not bother his stomach that say there's like a little dairy in it, which doesn't make sense because dairy would bother his stomach. But if, you know what I mean? Like if there's, if he's just not going out of his way to be a perfect vegan and he's like eating like one egg a month or one piece mm -hmm. of fish a month because he's been convinced that it would be good for his health. I think that's something that that is worth respecting because I would love to get all the meat eaters in the world to cut down to one egg a month and one fish a month, you know? Well, I mean, again, I feel like you're viewing it from like a numbers comparison, right? Like, mm -hmm. like, yes, to a certain extent, right? Like, for example, if I could snap my fingers and instead of having, you know, 5,000 people die in car accidents, have, you know, if I could have 2,500 people die in car accidents, if I could set my finger and make that happen. Yeah. I mean, I think we, if it was that simple and that easy, I think we ought to do that morally. Mm -hmm. Um, but the amount of people dying, right. So like 10,000 people dying in car accidents versus 2000, I don't think the more people dying makes driving cars any less or more moral, if that makes sense. So like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> If an action that I'm doing, right, if my action is not directly called, you know, exploiting or violating the rights of others, and it just so happens that this activity leads to, you know, a lot of death, right? Um, I don't find like if there was a way to reduce that death, that's great. I'm, I'm for it. But um, if there wasn't, I still wouldn't be against that action. Right. I'm not against that. I'm not against the action of driving cars. I just would want there to be a way to reduce the amount of car accidents. 
But that doesn't yeah. mean that, you know, car accidents are, are driving a car is immoral, if that makes sense. So I, I don't really like doing the numbers thing because you could take that to an infinite level of what's unnecessary, right? Again, like if well, there was a way – oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I just like the, num the numbers must matter though, right? Like so if uh, one cow suffering mm -hmm. is better than two cows suffering, right? Sure. And so if, if let's say Alex um, – could could go to eating um, uh, ten units of mm -hmm. of animal products a week, but Alex decides he went from being vegan to eating one one or two units of animal products a week um, versus what he could do if he wasn't thinking morally. He's he's going okay. I can't do this anymore. I crave this thing, and I've been convinced of this health thing. So I'm going to eat some of this. But because of my morals, I'm going to not eat these ten units that I would eat if I didn't have the morals. I think those numbers must matter, right? So okay, like for example, a murderer who is totally fine with murdering, instead of killing ten people in a week, he decides he's only gonna, only going to kill two people. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is better in terms yeah. of like the individuals that are harmed in terms of, you know, the the overall rights violations, whatever. But the actual lens that that person is viewing morality through and the actual actions that he's committing, while it's not as bad as it could be, I would still argue he's still committing rights violations. He's still doing something immoral based on my 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 um, perspective or my values now. I think the issue here is like what I would or I, what I would want to ask you is like, yes, the numbers matter. But for example, if we knew that 500 people die a year from murders, but 20,000 people die a year from car accidents, would we ban driving cars and allow, you know, like would we prioritize reducing the car accidents or would we prioritize punishing or, or reducing the murders gotcha um well i i think okay so we definitely like as a society we want to protect and mm -hmm. we want to um weigh out good versus bad there's so many goods to driving that a yeah. car accident is gonna not make us stop um uh stop having that if uh if when people text and drive, there were no accidents, then there would be no law against texting and driving. It'd be mm -hmm. like, somehow we're able to achieve this. Um, and then same thing with murder. So we want to protect from murder. We want, we want to feel like we, we are safe in our society. So we say you, you can't murder. If you murder, you're going to go to jail. Um, so yeah, I would, I would say, um, yeah, maybe this will answer the question. I, I, I don't know why I'm going about it in such a long way. Um, with the trolley problem, problem, I let the five die. I don't switch it over to the one track. Um, cause, cause yes, an act, I, I, I view, um, accidents very different than a rights violation. And um, for me, what matters most is the rights violation. Right. So, and that's kind of my thing is like, when we're looking at the lens of, okay, the only um, death that or suffering that's occurring is through car accidents. Okay. How can we reduce this? What can we do? What regulation can we put in place? How can we minimize the car accident deaths from 20,000 to 10,000 to 5,000 to hopefully none. Right. Mm -hmm. But when we're look viewing it from, okay, there are thousands of people being murdered every year. And then there are thousands of people dying of car accidents every year. We should have laws and regulation and, and more protection against the intentional rights violations versus the car accidents or the indirect rights violations we could call it that right so like mm -hmm. when it comes to animal agriculture like yeah again i am actually you know depending on the scenarios again i, I don't know who would be in charge of this but i would actually be for because i i care about others i would like to be more minimal i i vow you know i value less suffering overall as well um i would be for different regulation for uh, crop agriculture, for, you know, goods you could purchase at the store for I'd be, you know, whatever, uh, whatever you want to look at. Um, but that I, uh, number one, I don't think that that could ever happen. Nobody is ever going to care about that when we have a system of animal of direct animal exploitation, right? Yeah. I always, 
I, I, I agree with you that it's complicated because we, you know, we can compare different things and one thing can be way worse than another. Um, but just as far as trying to figure out if an action is bad, let's, um, I have an apple tree in my backyard. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I'm actually at the point where I don't have to fertilize it. I don't have to water it. It's uh, something about trees. They actually just, they happen to get enough water that they're fine, or at least this apple tree. Um, so, um, aside from something happening outside of my knowledge, there's zero, like I don't put out rodents aside for, Mm -hmm. um, to, to save the apples from rats or anything. Zero harm is happening. If I pull an apple off that tree and I'm thinking about eating it and then I change my mind and I just toss it down. Um, if I just throw it away, throw it down, it's going to compost and go back into the earth and do its thing. Did I do an immoral act by throwing that down? I'm sorry. What are you throwing down again? I'm just sorry, I'm throwing the out, throwing the apple away. Just apple. I I picked off the tree. I was okay. going to eat it, but I changed so my mind. Instead of eating it, you just put it on the ground. I just throw it away. Yeah. No, I don't think. Okay. So. Now, if what if somebody purchases a vegan cake, mm-hmm. and as of now, I don't know of any cropland that doesn't involve some death. Um, they purchase this vegan cake. And they're gonna eat it, but they go, uh, ah, change my mind. I don't want it, and they throw mm-hmm. it in the garbage. If that, ve- if we can calculate it and figure out whatever percentage of an animal died to get that vegan cake, even if it's point zero zero zero, um, which would mean that at some point we could add it up. And if they just bought ten vegan cakes, and we can ignore the idea of waste or the idea of plastic on the environment, anything like that. It's just the idea of putting something in demand, purchasing this item. Uh, it's a vegan item, mm-hmm. but throwing it away. Is that an immoral act if we put in demand a thing that is entailing animal death and then throwing it away? No, I don't think so. Because again, like it's an empirical question. So like, okay, mm-hmm. you would have to show that there are more crops grown specifically for the cake, right? Not just using the crops that were growing in, in like and dividing up the resources, but also... Uh, I always like this uh, calculation where um, if there were cro- if there wasn't cropland there, right, there would be wildland, right, mm-hmm. and there is death and rights violations happening on wildland amongst animals, right. So you'd mm-hmm. also have to show that there is more death. And again, if we're just talking about numbers, right, we're forget about intentional versus indirect. Forget about you know veganism. Where if we're just talking about um, more death, less death, less death is preferable. How, what, you know, what's the calculation or what's the, the, the evidence for that? So, um, yeah, you'd have to show that there is less animals dying on wildland versus cropland. So that's one thing. So if we're talking about evidence you need to provide, you know, that's some of it, but again, um, what was I going to say? Um, you mentioned the cake, throw it out. Um, I could respond to the wildlife thing and then maybe it'll pop. Yeah, go for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I used this analogy before and if, uh, you don't like this one, I can switch over to a different one, but let's say, um, somebody, um, some woman is in an alley and there's 10 people that are going to gang sexually assault her. And then somebody comes by and saves her and they stop all those other guys. And Mm -hmm. then they force a kiss on her and say, I'm just going to kiss you. You don't, I'm not asking for your permission. I'm just doing this because a really bad thing was about to happen and that was stopped. So I'm doing this, this thing that's uh, also bad, but nowhere near as bad. Um, I think that analogy um, lines up well with this wildlife thing. I've never understood this when I hear lifting vegan logic or Dr. Uh Avi say it. Um, I have not been convinced that there's any logical, reasoning for this. And uh, w- while you're pondering that analogy, I'll just give uh, an extra detail to the wildlife analogy itself within itself. If I went out and found a piece of land that I could purchase for whatever reason, that was like 10 acres. Um, and there's a lot of wildlife, uh, death on there, suffering, whatever, whatever's mm-hmm. naturally happening. If I could purchase that land, fence it off and make it to where now n- there's no wildlife in it. So in that specific piece of land, it went from, let's say, 10 units of suffering to now zero units of suffering. Um, there's a chance that I could need that to grow food for my family or for a company or whatever. But let's say in this hypothetical, um, I don't need to, but I could. Um, so it had 10 units of suffering from wildland, and I took it down to zero. If I turn that land 
into something that now causes more suffering, I don't have to compare it to the 10 units of suffering that happened before. Now I have to compare it to the zero because that is an option as well. And so if I now go, I'm going to create vegan cakes that I'm only going to sell to people or give for free to people um, that don't need any food. I'm only going to give this to people that are mm -hmm. at least 100 pounds overweight. Um, then let's say now there's two units of suffering on this uh, this land. Two units is a lot less than 10, but there is suffering and death happening because of creating this thing. And the only justifiable reason in my own personal morals would be for health. Um, not that I'm saying somebody has to figure out how to be the perfect amount of health and they can't go a little bit over, uh -huh. but I would say that it's justifiable to figure out, to learn what healthiness is in your own mind or whatever and try to be a certain amount of healthy and if you honestly are going past that and you get overweight and you're you're consuming something just for taste pleasure a vegan cake that let's say we know mm -hmm. that nothing in it is going to give you any nutrients you need you're only consuming it for taste pleasure um I'm not saying people have to stop eating vegan cake, but it sure. is going against, it is causing rights violations that aren't needed and not necessary. Well, again, well, yeah, yeah. Let's, um, let's go back a little bit. I will talk about yep. the, the, the gang, you know, thing and versus a kiss or whatever. Right. So you're the, you are kind of the one who is putting a lot of weight on numbers, right? I'm not putting like, again, my, my main concern, like, yes, it would be great if we can reduce the number of deaths or suffering, even in things that aren't direct exploitation or aren't direct rights violations, whatever. But, um, but in the case of that gang situation versus the kiss, um, mm -hmm. you would actually, based on, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't want to straw man you, but it sounds like you would say, oh yeah, the kiss is better, right? Oh yeah, the, the kiss is better. And yeah, the, the, the kiss is better than what could have happened for sure, right? But again, I would say that a direct rights violation is still a direct rights violation. And in the case where it's, um, you know, they're about to be, um, I guess my point was, right, if we're talking about numbers, then the amount of numbers that are involved on wildland versus the amount of numbers that are involved on cropland does matter because you're not talking about direct rights violations. You're talking about the number of overall suffering and death that's caused by a certain circumstance. Well, I'm right. only referring to rights violations myself. I'm unsure how we should handle suffering out in nature. That uh -huh. counter was just to the Dr. Avi lifting vegan logic sure. idea of this is justifiable because of what the wildlife would have done. And uh -huh. I just don't think it is. And I think that's their claim. Um, okay. but yeah, I think numbers matter in a sense, but I only, I'm only referring to numbers within rights violations. So then I guess, what do you consider a rights violation, right? Because for example, um, if, and again, I, I think that the number of animal death that's involved in crop production could be drastically reduced in a vegan worldview. Again, keep in mind, uh, it's non-vegans that are farming that have these, have created these systems. So I do think a lot of it could, would be drastically scaled down. But um, when we're talking about, using resources right so i mean we could even equalize this like we could put it with humans right we could we could look at it from humans if there was a group of humans that could not be reasoned with that had no ability to understand civilization or society and every time that we right civilized humans or you know humans that can't communicate try to grow crops to eat right to to grow resource or use resources if they kept coming over and kept destroying all the resources that we were that we were using or um eating all our food um again at that point it is like an us versus them um and it's a matter of like okay um they are taking all of the food that we are growing for ourselves right it's not like in a circumstance where we're dealing with other individuals that can be reasoned with it would be simple enough to divide up the land, divide up the resources, move them here, move them there, like we do with humans to a certain mm -hmm. extent. Obviously, I think there are issues with our system, but that's another conversation. But um, yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, let me counter it 
in two different ways. One mm-hmm. that means something to me, but one that just kind of challenges your your own stance on the moral side of things. Sure. Um, so let's look at something like um, uh, people coming over to the Americas from uh, from Europe and seeing Native Americans there. Mm-hmm. And if, if, let's let's imagine that they were um, super friendly and, and and said like, "Hey, we just want to come um, share this land with you." Mm-hmm. Um, and then the the natives say no. And mm-hmm. then the let's say that the 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 Europeans say, "Oh, well, we're going to." Um, do you do you think do you who do you side with? Well, um, I think in that scenario, they like you said, they're able to communicate with each other. Um, but in the scenario of like, what are you talking about a hypothetical or are you talking about what actually happened? Mm, yeah. Let's say they, they let's colonizers. say they can't communicate then. Um, so in that case, um, okay. So the colonizers or the, the, let's say the people from Spain, wherever they came from, they come over to the land and they want to occupy portions of the land and, let, oh, okay. Okay. So, um, so let me ask you this, uh, this clarification on the hypothetical. So let's say yeah. the people who are not native, right? Native to the land, they come over and they want to build shelter in a portion of the land, right? Mm-hmm. Um, let's say, you know, a, a, a 50th of the land or whatever. And every time they try and put up a house, the natives come and they destroy the house. Mm-hmm. over and over and over again to the point where the people that have come onto that land, the new people that have come onto that land will die if they do not, if they are not able to build this house. Right. Correct. I would say that in that case, they do have a right to um, defend their home, right. Their, their means mm-hmm. for survival from the people that literally cannot communicate will cannot be reasoned with and are jeopardizing their, their survival. Yeah. Um, but one thing to add is like, when it comes to philosophical question, I don't, I don't have all the answers. I don't Mm -hmm. know what the justification for us living is, right? I did not ask to be brought into existence. Mm -hmm. So like, again, like we, these like nitty gritty philosophical questions are really interesting, Mm -hmm. but I just, I don't have all the answers. Oh, right. for sure. And, and I don't either. And I think the reason, the good thing about these, at least for me, because I, I find it interesting and I want to be the best human I can be and hopefully have conversations that can help others as well, mm-hmm. is just to um, just to further my stance. I learn new things every day. And so um, I think this is very comparable with the Native American thing. I just um, I, like I want to survive. I want to live. I would do anything um to survive. But outside of that, I don't want to cause any harm. And mm-hmm. so in the same sense that like, uh, and the, the reason I, I mentioned the native American thing is, um, because it, it's actually an element that Alex says in the talk that you guys listened to, but it's actually the last little clip that you guys um, didn't listen to, which is basically saying, uh, one interesting element is that we came to their land. So humans are taking land that it belongs to the animals growing stuff and then getting mad at the animals that are that are um, eating it but i me being a person that wants to survive i will do that and i will do exactly what you said which is i will call it an immoral act that i feel like i need to do as a person that wants to survive well but here's the thing right when you say we came onto their land we were all kind of brought into existence on the same land so like when it comes to humans and animals, it's not like we were brought into existence on a totally separate land and are now like going to deer country or something like we're all born in. Forget about our, our modern society where we built cities and we've clearly took, took out a chunk and called it ours. Mm-hmm. You know, we when we were brought into existence, right, let's say early humans, we were all brought deers, all the other animals, humans, we we're all brought onto the same plot of land. Right. Yeah. So. Again, it, I think it comes down to reasoning and trying to create a more civilized society that does offer protection from rights violation. Mm-hmm. But with individuals that you literally can't be reasoned with and will continuously um, cause rights violations, mm-hmm. um, I think it gets very muddy. Like, I don't think it's as clear as animal agriculture. Um, I I do agree that it gets muddy. But what I will say is that if we know, let's say that we empirically know mm -hmm. 
that all things that we purchase from stores that come from cropland entail death. Mm -hmm. Then there has to be, so again, the cakes, um, I use cake as an example because it's practically nutritionless. There's, there's no nutrition to it. So you take a vegan cake at some point, whether it's just one cake or if you say 10 cakes or a hundred cakes, if you throw that away, you are putting in demand something that you are getting nothing out of Mm -hmm. that is entailing death. It's death caused by you putting it in demand in the same sense that we'll tell somebody that says, Oh, I'm not killing them. I'm just, I'm just eating it. Somebody else butchered yeah. the animal. Um, you're saying, if I, I'm not saying your action. Sport. Well, I'm you're saying, saying we, if, I'm saying we do, but, uh, you do if, have if, the empirics for it. Well, yes. Can we, you, we, so you can provide evidence that shows that for every extra, I don't know, for every extra piece of cake, there is X amount of animals dying. Um, I mean, I have to do a lot of math, but yeah, I, I, we, there, the numbers, I, I, I don't have it on hand, but the numbers exist for, um, the, the average amount of deaths from cropland, as far as, mm-hmm. um, each animal, like, uh, mice, rats, birds, whatever, whatever different thing. And, and then we could just divide and, you know, and, and figure out the numbers. I'm, I'm not saying we have the exact numbers, but I'm saying it's pretty safe to say that every piece of food that we can consume, how farms work now will have this issue the and there will be a certain number like so so when you consume the vegan food you consume Mm -hmm. we we there is a number that exists no matter what there must be a number that exists whether we know the exact number or not the exact number would be a a silly uh 0.092 um animals die a year because of uh logical consistencies um food consumption sure um now if you looked at exactly what you were going to eat for this year and then you doubled it Mm -hmm. then we would however many animals would be harmed would be doubled and and so we yeah well i think i I think we should view it from a calorie perspective not a like a specific food i know what you're i think you're implying that the cake would in the scenario we're eating cake it's it's beyond our maintenance calories right so i think you know we should view it from a because obviously if i eat 2,000 calories and 500 of it is coming from cake versus 2,000 calories and none of it's coming from cake it's the same amount right so if, i'm assuming you mean eating more calories uh right? yeah because i mean how would it, because if i'm eating the same amount of calories how would the food choices i make unless again you can empirically so that like let's say corn results in more death than soy or whatever you know what i there mean there is there is that too but I, I guess i'm going at it an angle from uh causing harm suffering death um for taste pleasure i think that that's the the most logical argument i can see the most reasonable argument for eating animals would be the argument of if it was healthy to eat animals then that's the most justifiable uh reason and so same thing with this where if this crop death the most unjustifiable reason would be taste pleasure alone. Right. But again, if we're talking about numbers, we'd have to go off it from calories. um, That, that's, that might be the easiest route to go. And I don't know why I'm necessarily challenging that, but I do want to point out that um, if somebody, if somebody's maintenance calories was 2000 calories Mm -hmm. a day and they got that from cake every day. No, no, not not all from cake. But what what I'm saying is like, what I'm saying is like, if I eat 2000 calories, of the least processed, let's say healthiest, whatever that means, but the healthiest food, you know, uh, plant-based foods mm-hmm. versus 2000 calories of Oreos and bread or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if we're just talking about the numbers of, of, of crop deaths, right? Or deaths mm-hmm. that, you know, calorie wise, they would be equal, right? Unless yeah. again, we looked at okay, you're consuming this much soy and soy has more crop deaths compared to corn. But if we're just talking about like generally, as long as calories are equal, the crop deaths should be equal, right? So I think Mm -hmm. if we're talking- Something like that, yeah. Yeah, because in in Connor, Connor, um, Alex O'Connor's point, he's saying a bodybuilder because they require more calories. Um, Uh, Correct, yeah. Right, and that's, and bodybuilding is not exercise for like big, like- the minimum amount of exercise for health, it's after a certain goal for pleasure or whatever, mm-hmm. right? So that was his point. I think my biggest issue and why I find this, I like, I do, I like these conversations, um, but I think the reason why I, 
get very frustrated with Alex O'Connor's position is because he is essentially trying to get into the nitty gritty of existence of crop deaths of what's morally right when it comes to us using resources, taking resources away from animals, the death set, uh, uh, animal deaths because of our presence on the planet, essentially, um, while he is contradicting his own values, right? While he is not aligning his uh, morals with his actions. And beyond that, while he is directly contributing to the uh, rights violations of other individuals, and to answer your speculation or your question earlier, he does consume meat. He does consume animal flesh. Oh, okay. uh, the way I know that is because on the tri trigonometry podcast, they said, so you went from um, like, how did you go from being a vegan to a meat eater? And Alex didn't correct them. He didn't provide any oh. clarification. So we can assume based on that, that he does eat animal flesh. Um, and yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I would be for, um, you know, I, I try, I, you know, I try and be within a healthy way. I try and be as minimal, you know, as I, maybe not as I possibly could. Right. Cause again, we could take that to the, the, the tiniest amount where I'm, you know, essentially a hermit in a cave, but um, separate from that, I do try and be mindful about how much I'm consuming and I would be for better regulation to control crop production, to control all of these extra products and things that literally provide no value other than pleasure um, and profit for those companies. So I would actually be for more regulation there, but that in no way. So like preferences or, or like talking about what's better or worse in that context has, I, I, I think should have a zero effect on the moral obligation uh, that is to go vegan. Um, I, and I mostly agree with you. I, I just think it's interesting to go down to each. Like, I would imagine that if we lived in a vegan world, the thing we're talking about now would become a huge deal. It would yeah, be it would be the probably. new vegan. And I think that it's good for us to think outside the box and fi and figure these things out. Like, the only downside to something like this is if it convinced um, people that were thinking about being vegan to go, oh, it's too complicated. Which is why I don't think an idea like this should be, like, sprung on somebody like – you're not mm -hmm. vegan unless you do this, um, which is why I, I don't think in that kind of way. Anyways, mm -hmm. like I'm a huge fan of focusing on welfare for animals while they're farmed until we can get the farming to stop. I'm a huge fan of stuff like advocating for meatless Mondays, mm -hmm. all these different things, because I, I think it's good to um, – to meet people where they're at, work on with people through baby steps and all these different things. But uh, at the same sense that like getting somebody go from eating a lot of meat down to a little meat is good. Getting somebody that is vegan, but 200 pounds overweight that eats vegan cake every day, they are literally so, putting in demand the death, the unnecessary death of animals. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So let's say in a hypothetical if more animals died from crop production versus animal agriculture, um, would you stop contributing to crop production and start contributing to animal agriculture? I would call that the vegan thing to do. Um, really? The vegan. Really? Yeah. So, so if I had okay. a plate with a steak on it and a mm -hmm. plate with apples on it, and I knew that the plate with the steak on it okay. was three units of suffering and death, and the plate with the apples was 10 units of suffering and death, the vegan choice so, is to eat that steak. Okay, okay. Sure. So let me scale that up a little bit. So, okay. So what you're saying is um, if a system that breeds animals into existence um, exploits them directly and mm -hmm. kills them had less suffering or less uh, rights violations, let's say less overall death to make it easy, um, versus um, growing and protecting crops for human consumption, right? Where it's mm -hmm. not a direct, like the goal is not to exploit animals or to treat animals as products, right? It's an indirect thing. Um, you're saying that you would support the direct exploitation of animals and not support crop production. Um, yes, I think they're both direct, but yes. Okay. So let me put it in the human context. So okay. let's say there is an industry that involves a million human deaths every year. Okay. 
Okay. And then there is factory farming of humans that only results in a, a, a hundred thousand human deaths per year. Are you saying that if you had to pick one, mm-hmm. that you would actually support the hund- the industry that has a hundred thousand human deaths versus the industry that doesn't directly breed and kill animals, but involve but has more human death overall? That that's what you're saying. Not human death overall, or even human suffering, which I care more about suffering, but the direct, yes, the direct element of it is is what I care about. If we were putting so out you poison say, for would, humans that would attract humans because we knew humans would be there, and we were just trying to kill the humans, so we basically my my uh, deer mm-hmm. apple example, then yes, if in both cases there were humans being directly intentionally killed, I would go for whichever one had less, correct? So you view, um, so you view that, like, let's say, uh, that's a good example. Okay, so you view the, let's say, killing of an animal that cannot be reasoned with to protect human food supply the same as the same amount of exploitation or the same amount of direct rights violation as breeding an animal into existence, treating them as products and then slitting their throat for food. It would be a measurement of suffering. So, so you, uh, but well, so, 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 so the answer is no. So if there's a okay. cow that is bred into a factory farm and it's raised for four years in a tiny area being fed garbage it's not supposed to be eating mm-hmm. and getting branded and getting dehorned and all these different things, um, mm-hmm. the suffering level of that is going to be a lot more than the suffering level of, um, of a rat um, suffering from poison and dying. Okay, um, so- I, yeah. So I'd Sorry, much rather I... the rat be shot with a gun and die instantly. And I'd still, I'd much rather both of those cases than the situation with the cow. But, um, but would I rather somebody go shoot a deer in the forest and be such a perfect shot that it doesn't have any suffering at all? Or would I rather, um, a deer eat some deer poison and, and slowly die because that's what the farm calls for. But the farming is just for um, our vegan food. Um, I would much rather the hunted deer than the, it, it would all come down to the suffering and maybe death, but mostly suffering. Right. But again, first of all, you keep saying our vegan food. It's not just vegan. It's crops, right? It, vegans are the only one they get crops. But um, yes, like you're saying ve- food compatible with veganism, Ooh, I guess. I um, only say our vegan food because what I am referring to is what we put in demand um, as vegans. So I, I would say we can exclude what non-vegans put in demand, I guess, if we want to. We can exclude the food that's being fed to animals because that's just not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to the demand we're putting in in the same way when we talk to animal eaters about the demand they're putting in. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm just confused. So um, are you talking about like, again, like only vegan cakes and stuff? Or are you talking about like soy, rice, whole, whole food? Oh, everything. Uh, I find it justifiable to um, want to live and therefore to poison rats so we can eat whole food to be healthy. And I'm going to do it. I, I'm not asking people to, to, to lay down their lives. But yes, I am I am talking about all of that. If, if we're talking about like the apples and the steak and which one I'm going to eat or which one's more vegan. Um, yeah, I'm so, I'm ta- so when you're when you say vegan food, you just mean food consumed by vegans. Uh, correct. OK. OK. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I just I don't again that's that's a very utilitarian perspective where you're only after like reducing suffering and maximizing well-being. Which again, I I don't I don't really understand because um, not maximizing well-being just for myself personally. I don't think of myself as utilitarian either. But okay. um but so yeah, suffering put, matters to me. You only put value on reducing suffering, not the well-being part. Just reducing suffering. Um correct. Like I I think it's morally wrong to cause suffering to someone, but I don't think I I don't think anybody should feel morally obligated to go cause pleasure to anybody that like I I don't think anybody needs to go out of their way to cause pleasure to a stranger. Um, so as far as pleasure or well being or any of that, unless you are causing the lack of well being, um, but uh, but yeah, from my angle, the suffering is the bulk of what matters. Uh, mm-hmm. w- how about you? Yeah. So again, it's, it's, 
not a, for me like yes suffering i think is important to look at but it's mm-hmm. ultimately about rights violations like for for example i, I may maybe this is a better better example with the human context because again my my thing is i want to understand this from a like i want to make sure you're consistent with mm-hmm. with what you're saying right so yeah. Maybe this uh, this may be a good example. I think it's better, um, a better example. But because when I said industry, I just said whatever industry, right? Let's say there's an industry that, um, uh, like let's say sweatshop, okay? So sweatshop, um, sweatshop that pays workers almost nothing. The conditions are awful. Um, the, um, what's it called? Um, um, there's a lot of suffering, let's say, right? There's a lot mm-hmm. of suffering in that sweatshop. Um, but the they do still get paid and the products that they make um, are in accordance with the laws they have in that country, let's just say, right? Okay. Um, versus there is a factory that, again, uh, let's say they don't breed humans into existence. Let's say they just round them up and slit their throats for products, right? They're treated as products. Mm-hmm. Um, in the scenario where there would be more suffering in the sweatshop, right? Even though those humans are still treated as humans, they have mm-hmm. individual freedoms, um, but there is overall more suffering in that sweatshop. Mm-hmm. You're saying that you would rather support the factory farm because mm-hmm. there is less overall suffering versus the sweatshop where there's more suffering. No, no, no. I, I guess I can see where you, where you got that. Uh, but so but just all, really quick, sorry, just, yeah. I'll let you clarify, but just really quick, because mm-hmm. earlier I thought you said that in the scenario where there is more suffering involved with crop agriculture and less mm-hmm. suffering involved with animal agriculture, you said the vegan thing to do, the right thing to do based on your mm-hmm. values is to support the intentional, um, the, the, uh, the exploitation and the, the factory farming. If both were intentional, correct. Okay. The sweatshop is intentional. What's the, the sweat- sweatshop okay. is intentional. So the sweatshop. Okay. So somebody sets up a sweatshop yeah. and they're going to, um, make it miserable to work there. But the person, the people that go to work there they feel obligated to work there because they need the money, but they are going on their own accord. They're just, they're going in. So I don't, Oh, here's a better, here's a great, here's a better example. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry. So the sweatshop that we're talking about is producing food, right? Let's say they're producing food, right? And they're producing crops, right? Let's just say, and you need one or the other to survive. You either need to buy food from the sweatshop to survive, or you need to purchase food from the factory, the human factory farm to survive. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. So in the sweatshop example, again, let's say in the factory farm, they are, they're not bred, right? Let's say, right, they are, um, they, they have their throat slit, right? Okay. As humane as, as possible, right? Sure. Um, so in this scenario where the sweatshop filled with humans that are producing food, mm-hmm. in the scenario where there is more suffering in the sweatshop of humans that are producing food. And again, this is an intentional sweatshop. This isn't accidental. Mm-hmm. Somebody is, is intentionally making these humans suffer in the sweatshop. But um, the food they're producing is crops, right? It's, it's whatever, right? So uh, the sweatshop is producing food versus mm-hmm. a factory farm where humans are being rounded up and having their throats slit. Mm-hmm. Would you prioritize not contributing to the factory farm that is having humans throat slit and and um, not offering protection to those humans or would you pri- or would you like prioritize not contributing to the sweatshop where there is more overall suffering but those humans still have free will they are not being they are not the products mm-hmm. yeah um so a very complicated very good question um, 
I'm trying to, there's, there's so many different angles to look at it. So for sure. one, I want to point out that when I say I care about suffering most, I am referring to rights violations. Now, suffering doesn't cover all rights violations, um, but I would say all rights violations would fall into suffering and death. Um, which I care about both intentional causes. So you're saying there can't be rights violations without suffering or death? I don't think so. Uh, okay, so let's say let's say there's a woman who has been given a drug, and she's completely passed out in the back of a car, and uh -huh. this drug ensures that she's going to have no memory mm -hmm. of this interaction. Would it be okay to take advantage and violate her bodily autonomy, even though there is no suffering and no death involved? Uh. uh no, I'm, 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 I'm certain enough that I'm going to call it a flat out no. Um, and what, and but no, that's why, a fair point. Yeah, because if you're saying that your your biggest thing about rights violations is just the suffering and the death, you're saying that if there's there's actions that don't involve suffering and don't involve death, mm -hmm. then it's fine. But we can look at a lot of examples where yeah. that's not the case, and well, that's I, what I prioritize. I sure. regardless of the amount of suffering, I prioritize extending rights extending protections to those humans if there are there is suffering happening to humans to animals separate from the direct rights violations which again we could we could debate on the mm. crop protect protection or whatever yeah. but um in a scenario where humans are treated or animals are treated as products versus not being treated as products mm. i'm going to prioritize having the the, the product mentality changed first of course, if we could do both at the same time, that's a totally different thing. Yeah, well, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if they're necessarily comparable, but um, but yes, correct. There are going to be some cases where the suffering, um, where it's not suffering or death, there there are other violations. And uh, I guess I was just lumping in the idea of like liberty itself in with suffering because it's an element of suffering to not have liberty. But yeah, um, but yeah, basically just um. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you on that stance. But let, let's, as far as the the hypothetical goes, um, I'm trying to think of the elements I was thinking of that was making me um, figure out how hard of a time. Because basically, what I'm trying what I'm trying to figure out is my stance on most of this would be involved in what I think the government should do. <laughs> so I like so so in my mind, if um, you have humans just living out in the wild, they haven't created a society yet. Um, the the reason we want to form a society is we get together and we realize okay we need protection that that's what we need we don't need freedom we're already out in the wild we have freedom now we need to sacrifice a little freedom for protection so we have this government that has law enforcement and basically you're just told you can't physically harm people you can't drug people you can't kill people you can't do all these things and mm -hmm. if you do you're going to go to jail and i think that's that's like the ultimate important thing of uh what a government's for and i think we should extend those rights uh, uh for the most part um unless there's some need for health which i don't think there is but if there were then that would be an excuse for me but outside of that i think we should extend um as much as possible those rights um to animals and that would be great so when i look at this hypothetical my first thoughts that are just coming to my mind are um w how does the government view imagining the government's okay with um farming killing and eating humans how separately from that uh, not that they need to be consistent but how do they view this idea of um, business? And so my, my first thought is trying to figure out what things I think um, a company should or should not be able to do as far as um, the individuals in there. But if the individuals come in on their own no. and they're only treated. Bad, yeah. Let's say, let's say in both scenarios, they're mentally challenged. So let's say in this hypothetical world, mentally oh, challenged individuals okay. who can't communicate, can't understand anything. They um, that that's how they're treated. Let's let's say that. Okay, then yeah, I think I think unless I I miss something, I think I definitely would go whichever one's causing the most uh, suffering. Really? Okay, so you're saying that um, in the sweatshop scenario where mentally challenged people um, are, they still have their like freedoms, right? As much as they can for what they can understand. Um, mm -hmm. You're saying that because there is more suffering from an individual perspective in the sweatshop, you would rather uh, you would rather support the scenario where mentally challenged people are being factory farmed. Um, 
I think I think so because the the, the wow. elements. No, I don't know. I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's well. Crazy. Let me just see if know. I fully figure you out. Yeah, it, yeah. Because the, uh, uh, the 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 bulk. Do you care more about the suffering or the death? If we were just looking at those two, I care about. I care more about. Um, rights violations, and again, yeah, like me too. Okay, because let me in, better question. If you had two factory, two farms. Yeah, notice how I didn't say the rights violations were equal. I said there mm -hmm. was more suffering in the sweatshop. Now, right. suffering can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. There, there could be a lot of different ways to cause suffering, right? Like, yeah, yeah. for example, I could be standing next to you and I could like be poking you in the cheek over and over again, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, that 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 would be suffering. Am I violating a right? Maybe not. Or maybe like, like maybe I didn't touch you. Maybe I just have my finger right here, right? And mm -hmm. I did that for hours on end. You might go insane, right? It might cause a lot of suffering, but I'm not violating your right necessarily, right? Mm -hmm. So like in the sweatshop scenario, there's just more suffering. Right. And yeah. it's suffering as a result of the people in like working in the sweatshop. But there are like th there could be um, in, you know, there's no specification on how many more rights violations there are, how many less rights violations there are. There's mm -hmm. just more suffering. Whereas with the factory farm, we know that every person that is going in there is having their rights violated directly. Right. Okay. Because go ahead. But, uh, I might not be answering your question accurately if I don't necessarily have all the information now i have the information mm -hmm. you gave um if there are rights violations aside from the death and the suffering that i um am not thinking about that's that's um worth going over and um and i i guess that that element would be something like being forced to be there versus the people at the the factory um the other factory the the work factory um going home but 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 I think one thing that we might be getting hung up on is my my view on the difference between suffering and um, death. So just really quick, if you had two farms, farm A and farm B, mm -hmm. and both of them bred a cow into existence, and one of them, farm A, that cow is treated like a factory farmed cow, just getting all the horrible treatment, the horrible suffering, all that kind of stuff. And then you got farm B and that cow was just like, it didn't even know it was on a farm. It had so much room, all this grass mm -hmm. and stuff. And then after four years, um, both are, are coming to an end. They're both going to be killed quickly and die or whatever. Um, do you view the, the death as worse or equal or whatever the, the instant death um, how, how do you compare that? Like, wh what do you think yeah, of as worse like, or not than four years of suffering? Uh, it, it might be better to compare pigs. I think they might have the worst life in factory farms. So, so again, if I had to pick one, I would pick death only versus torture and death, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's fair to say that, okay, if, there, if we have What about to death pick, versus tor torture and life? Versus torture and life. So you got um, one pig that's living the greatest mm -hmm. life ever four years later. It just gets quickly executed. Or another pig that is factory farm till it dies of natural causes, but it's crammed in this tiny cage. It's going mentally insane. It's, uh, it's brothers and sisters are biting its tail off or it has to have their teeth clipped from birth. All Basically, the first yeah. 10 minutes of uh, don't, uh, Dominion. Well, uh, again, going yeah, I mean... Life. That and not is dying. an interesting question. I think, again, it comes down to rights violations. Like, I would say in both scenarios, their rights are being violated, and that's unjustified. Um, mm -hmm. If I had to pick one, I don't – like, I could pick what I would want for myself, right? I can't say mm -hmm. that one of those is more moral or less moral. I would say that they're – in terms of rights violations, they're probably equal. Um, maybe – you could put an intelligent brain inside the, the pigs and mm – -hmm ask them what they would want what do you think they would want um i would say that if again going off of my what i would choose i would mm -hmm. probably if i did like again because you know if i didn't have any freedoms if it was just torture um mm -hmm. i would probably choose the have a great life and then die um or get okay. killed i guess um yeah i'd probably choose that one um go ahead sir so uh, I was just going to say, so I, I think even though it might seem extreme and you might think that we think extremely different, I don't know if we necessarily do. It's just really hard with this challenging hypothetical you gave, which is a really good hypothetical. 
um, it's just going to come down to a lot of the details. And uh, yeah. Well, but but again, like, yes, like, okay, like, um, what's it called? Um, I guess the problem with viewing things from a suffering lens is it's very hard to understand what suffering means for every individual. Right. Like, yes, we could generalize like, okay, keeping an animal or a human in a cage and depriving it of sunlight, like based on what we know on like what uh, pr pr uh, produces well-being, uh, what people need for like mental health, for physical health. Yes. Like we know that's going to cause a certain level of uh, discomfort or suffering or whatever. But it's, it's hard to calculate just based on suffering what situation is more moral or, or less moral. Like, mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. I watched something on the news the other day where um, this lady, I don't know if you saw it, it was on um, Instagram or something, but um, this woman was sent to jail because she was working with um, mentally challenged and mute kids. So these kids um, are mentally challenged and they're non-verbal. So they can't communicate anything. And on the bus, she would hit these kids. So she would like beat them, hit them. And these kids, if you look in the video, they don't really have any idea as to what's going on, right? So like they do have bruises, they do have marks on their body, but in the video, they're not crying, they can't communicate, right? So they're essentially taking this and just going about their day. Um, it's hard to know like in that scenario, like, okay, if you had uh, a scenario where somebody who is, let's say, um, um, not mentally challenged and can communicate, right? Somebody in that scenario would probably suffer more than somebody who is mentally challenged and can't communicate, right? Just because of their perceiving things at a lower level or um, maybe um, their pain because of their cognition is, is lower or something, who knows? Mm -hmm. um, yes, the other, the, the, the fully functioning or like the, the other group of people may be suffering more, but I would say that in both scenarios, the rights violation is equal, right? So like, mm -hmm. I don't, I wouldn't like say, oh yeah, the rights violation for somebody who is suffering less is better or is like more preferable than the rights violation of somebody who can suffer more. If They're both two, rights violations and they should both be given protections equally. If there is a burning building and there are two humans in there and one um, because of how cognitively impaired they were um, was less able to suffer and everything else is equal, mm -hmm. who would you save? Um, if my personal relationship to them was also equal, I'd probably save the higher functioning person if I had to pick. Okay. Uh, I just, yeah, I was just curious. It wasn't like a gotcha mm -hmm. or anything. Cause I, I agree. Um, but yeah, so I think, um, I think one thing that makes it tricky with, um, the comparing the humans, um, in, in, in the situation that you have is with the, with the farm, we are directly doing it. We, it's a, it's a thing that I think we both feel we have to do, but we are directly poisoning these, these rats and mice, um, for our crops. I, I, I guess that's where I get. With... Yeah. I, I think that's what I'm hung up, hung up on because from my perspective, we're all born onto this land, right? Let's say yeah. we're all born onto this land and these animals want resources we mm -hmm. want resources, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And if there is a way, look, if there is a way for us to divide up this land and to reason with these other individuals, by all means, that would be my biggest advocate. At, you know, that's what I would advocate for separate mm -hmm. from, you know, veganism. Um, but that there isn't a pot. That's not possible, right? But, but why, why should we grow things on land? Like, why, why should we? What's the reason that we, we could justify this? Well, what, what's the alternative? So like, and, and that's what I was going to ask you. Not, no, no alternative. On. Just why, why should we justify it? What, um, why should we justify it? I mean, I think there is a, again, uh, you could call it for survival, but I think there is a mm -hmm. comp like a healthy level of competition for survival or competition mm -hmm. for resources. Right. Yeah. And I because agree again, with you completely. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Survival. Okay. But why should we grow uh, vegan cakes? Well, separate from the cakes. I already said I was in favor of regulation. So separate from the cakes. Oh, so again, okay. I'm, yeah, I, I already mentioned at the very beginning, I would be in favor of more regulation. 
to try and minimize, right? To the, but but again, like, but Alex is in favor that, of regulation, top down. Remember, so the the well, the problem, yeah, yeah, the the problem with the problem with um with Alex's position is that nobody is going to regulate if if the people do not care. Can if you can point to any other social injustice or any other circumstance where there was top down regulation when ninety eight percent of the population were in favor of not regulating, I would love to see that example, but that just doesn't exist. That's the thing. Like mm -hmm. if if there could be regulation, top down regulation without people having to go vegan, yeah, I would want them to regulate it immediately. I don't. Who cares? Yeah, so too. Right. But. That just doesn't happen because the people in the government, keep in mind, the people who are regulating are part of the population, mm -hmm. right? If 98% of the population aren't in support of regulation, that also mm -hmm. means that statistically the people in who, who are regulating are also not going to be in favor of it. Yeah. And that's why it comes down to individual things. I'm not saying you should go out and tell all overweight vegans that they shouldn't be overweight or anything. Uh, well, maybe, maybe I'm not, um, well, but, uh, but as far I think as there's uh, a case for that, but yeah. Yeah. And, and, so, and that's, that's basically all I'm saying. And, and I, and I think he, Alex very well pointed out that the practicality was the reason he's not vegan separately when it comes to philosophy, his, um, some new thoughts, cause he was asked new thoughts. It was just very specific that he was saying, um, these are interesting thoughts. And I, and I think that's very important to recognize that if somebody says that they go by the vegan society definition mm -hmm. uh, with the practicable, um, w which would mean unless necessary that an overweight person eating a piece of vegan cake especially on a day that we'll say we know they got all their calories in that day, um, that they are causing harm. They are the cause. They are, they are putting in demand the cause of harm um, that is unnecessary. And it's not that they shouldn't do it because if, if, uh, if deleting, if not, if removing all music somehow uh, made less suffering, I don't know. I would be, I love music. I, I don't want, um, the, you know, the, or, or if, uh, like, I don't know if, uh, if my house was half the size it was, if that caused one, the difference between one mouse dying mm -hmm. or something like, I don't know. I'm not saying that we need to perfectly figure out everything in life to it's either all perfect or nothing, but I'm saying we can look at individual situations and go, is this one reasonable? And if it is directly taste pleasure, and not for human survival at all, that it wouldn't be fair to say that you are consistent with that vegan society definition if you're going to be overweight and eat that cake. I think we might yeah, agree, I, I, I think there is a case to be made for minimalism, for reduction of uh, or regulation of crop production, of calories, of products. Yes, I think there is a case to be made just for the betterment of – everybody, right? If we can reduce the overall suffering. But again, I, I don't view um, like killing an animal on a, on a desert island as the same rights violation as me taking food away from that animal or me like, like, for example. Um, but killing it for the food, that's different. Well, so the, I, I was going to scale it, right? So okay. if we're on a desert island, right, I'll go back to that example. And because we're, we're talking about survival, ultimately. So if we're on a desert island, um, I think there is a very big difference between viewing that animal as a resource for me to use and having to kill that animal. Let's say there's no other way. I can't fence it out. I can't scare it away. I can't keep it from eating my keep, – keep them from eating my food, Right. So the only way for me to eat the resource or for me to use the resources on that island was to kill that animal, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. I don't view those rights violations the same. I understand like from the animal's perspective, the animal is still getting killed, right? The mm -hmm. animal it may have an equal amount of suffering, right? Whether I use it as a product or I kill it to uh, get resources, right? Or, or mm -hmm. get you know, I kill it to prevent it from prevent them from um, taking resources. Yeah. So the, from the animal's perspective, yes, they are dying in both scenarios. The suffering might be equal, but when we're talking about setting a precedent, when we're talking about setting a, like 
how do we want the world to be morally? Mm -hmm. I don't think those rights violations are the same. And I would argue the same thing in the human perspective, right? If I'm on a desert island and I immediately look to the human and view them as a resource and slit their throat to eat their flesh, that's very different than me trying to do whatever I can to not kill that human. And then because that human is cons is can't be reasoned with and is eating all the resources on the island, I ultimately have to kill that human to get, get resources myself. I think yeah. that, you know, that line is very clear. No, and my- I agree. And I think you would probably agree with me. Um, like I'm not against the idea of somebody, um, calling like poison control or whatatever not poison control but um pest having, control or, uh, pe- yeah. yeah pest control like if there are like ants getting into their cupboards destroying their food if there's mm-hmm. uh rodents under their house chewing up and destroying their foundation that um you know we can't just say okay destroy our food and our, our shelter we we're, we're gonna take you out mm-hmm. um and i'm i'm fully on board for that which is which is why my focus is on the unnecessary calories yeah, um, which no, isn't easy and, to define, but yeah. Yeah, I think I think if there was a way to empirically prove all of this and somebody did the work and somebody had the evidence, I think there is a case to be made for regulation and for like maybe vegans tightening up their calorie consumption or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I just haven't seen any empirical evidence. If there is, and I'm talking not just to you, but to the chat, yeah. obviously besides just speculation, right? We might be able to assume certain things like obviously – if we have one field of crops versus two field of crops, yeah, maybe we're, you know, blending up more rats in two fields versus one. Like we could assume things, but unless, you know, there is clear evidence, um, I'm more or less agnostic as to whether or not like we need to tighten up our calorie consumption. And then mm. even then, like, again, I just, I, I, I don't think this should affect anybody going vegan. And that's my biggest issue Definitely. with Alex O'Connor is that he... I don't think he thinks that either. Well, but but here's the problem. Somebody asks, what has your posi- What ha- has anything about your position with veganism changed? And he goes on to say factory farming. He pays lip service to factory farming. While, like I said, I, he almost certainly is contributing to it. And then he goes on to talk about a lot of like different scenarios, right? Whether it's crop deaths or bodybuilders or whatever and continues to say well don't get me wrong this is not a justification for what we do to animals or for for factory farming but when he brings that up and he himself is not vegan again i think he is he's really muddying the waters and making it incredibly confusing right because Hmm. he's not aligning his actions with his own values he is um not he is contributing to again direct exploitation abuse and death of animals um or i should say murder of animals and at the same time he's being like well i've been thinking about vegan bodybuilders it's like i the whole thing seems very um philosophically dishonest i think that he's trying to find philosophical loopholes because he's educated because he knows he's very good uh, with with like talking and 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 you know philosophy, he's I would, I'd, I'd argue that it's very specifically only philosophically honest. It's not honest in, within action or practicability. But uh, I, I I think it's fair to be a person that you might do a certain action. But you could state, kind of like we were talking about earlier, we mm-hmm. could say this is moral or immoral, but this is what our action is going to be for this reason. It's immoral to break a finger, but I would break a finger to save this other person's life. And your actions won't fit with your morals, but you – and that's a bad example because that's extra justified where Alex's mm-hmm. animal eating probably isn't justified. Um, and what, what I mean by philosophically dishonest, I don't mean like – Again, I don't know. I'm not the best when it comes to philosophy. What I mean is it seems like he's using philosophy as a way to be dishonest, right? Because it sounds like he is saying as though like it's what it sounds like is he's framing it in a way that because of these new thoughts, because of this new um, these new questions, Mm -hmm. that's changing his position on veganism. 
Where in reality, again, and I stand by this, I think that he couldn't do it, right? Whether it's mm -hmm. convenience, whether it's whatever practical things he, he had going on. And now he's thinking about, okay, let, what about these other questions? So maybe my position is more justified. Yeah. You know, if that makes sense. Um, Cause, uh, mm -hmm. and, and like you, to your point, he has never actually went in detail on what practically or practicably um, what issues he had. He yeah. just hasn't. And I think he hasn't done that because he knows that whatever it is, it's a, there's a fix for it. There's like a workaround. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, yeah. he's, it's just stupid. I don't know. Well, it's, it's tricky because sometimes we, we might know something's a right thing to do, but because of, how life is and easy conveniences. We don't like, uh, I, I don't know a lot about, uh, recycling environment, plastic and whatnot, but I, I have a pretty good hunch that, uh, less plastic equals better. And mm -hmm. I usually make my own coffee, but there are some days where I might swing by a Starbucks to get my nitro cold brew and it'll be in a plastic cup. If I have this guy with me, I'll just have him put it in my cup. Um, but it doesn't mean that I, I can't say like, oh, I think if, if people cut back on using plastic cups or, you know, if everybody used half the amount they use. Um, and, and so same thing could go for all kinds of different things where I might make some claim about something not being the best, the best route to go. But then just due to daily life and issues, we're, we're not going to do it perfectly. And so with, with Alex, I would say that what he's doing is likely... Uh, especially if it's just for practical reasons and just being easier to grab a certain food that he likes the taste of, especially if it's taste pleasure is worse than somebody that's overweight eating a vegan cake. But I'd say the same thing would come down to that, which I know you um, agree with in, in a big way, but I, I just, I imagine somebody, an, uh, a vegan version of Alex that um, stopped eating vegan cakes and overeating food because they recognize that even though it's not doing a lot of harm, it is killing animals that if after thinking about it a while, they go like, I've decided for practical reasons, I'm actually like, it makes me happy to eat cake. So I'm going to eat one extra piece of cake every single day. And then it would be this complicated thing of, do we call this person bad or not? Do we call Alex bad? And I, I don't like to view people exactly in that, that lens. I, mm. I like to just analyze what I think is right or wrong or achievable. Um, but yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's an interesting conversation. Like I, I just, I guess I, at the end of the day, like I don't, I think, like I mentioned, I think there is a very firm line between using other sentient beings as resources versus using resources and it affecting other sentient beings. Right. I think that's ultimately we're talking about crop deaths versus um, animal agriculture. That's ultimately the line is like, again, um, one scenario we are using sentient beings or we are we are creating a worldview where sentient beings are um, resources, our products. And in the other one, because of our presence on the planet, sentient beings are affected. Right. But again, I would say that they're there. It's a very firm line between the two. Um, if I could minimize my effect on other sentient beings, including humans, I would love to. Right. I would mm -hmm. if, if there are ways that I can do that and still and still um, have what I need in terms of mental health, physical health, whatever. I would love to come up with ways to do that. I would love to have more regulation, stuff like I'd be open for that. But again, um, I don't view having a presence on the planet and that affecting other animals as the same kind of rights violation or the same kind of moral issue as treating those sentient individuals as products, right? Commodifying them, exploiting them, breeding them, whatever. And I was actually, I thought about this the other day too, which I, I guess we could talk about now. Um, Cause whenever I talk and I'll speak for myself because I do a lot of activism. Whenever I talk about, you know, uh, animal suffering or animal exploitation or animal death or killing, murder, whatever, people love to bring up crop deaths, right? Well, you know, vegans kill animals too, right? Or vegans, um, you know, uh, res crop crop production results in animals kill, uh, being killed as well. I, it's, I always find that interesting how nobody makes that same argument for building homes or building roads 
or mm -hmm. doing anything with infrastructure because it's only when it comes to crops. But if we're going to make the argument that, okay, crop production leads to animals being killed, so does uh, infrastructure building. So do mm -hmm. building roads. So, so does building homes, building whatever, right? But anytime where we have to build on the land, we've got to clear the whole land out we've got to destroy every you know kill everything there we've got to build up and then again people usually use pest control or use some kind of pesticide or um to keep animals away mm -hmm. and the thing is nobody is going around which maybe from your perspective they should but nobody's mm -hmm. going around saying okay no more building homes or hey hey um oh, no no or like saying like hey you know animals die because of the home that that you're in so why don't we, so who cares about animals dying in other circumstances, right? Nobody does that for homes, but they do that for crop production. And I don't understand why, because mm -hmm. to me, it's the same thing to me. Yeah. We are, you know, would you agree that it's crop production? Well, yeah. Cause I, I think most people doing that are not vegans that are just trying to shut it out. Most yeah, people don't want to be thought of as bad guys. So even if you don't challenge them with vegan ideas, if they just hear of a vegan existing, they think that that means that if that vegan is correct, then they're the bad guys. So they're coming up with the, will you kill animals on crops or whatever? Uh, which is probably why it's so challenging for vegans to hear other vegans talk about crop deaths. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I completely agree with you. And I think that it's worth us figuring out all those different things mm -hmm. and figuring out why we feel how we feel and what things fall into those categories. Yeah. I, I think um, I've decided for myself that I think p taste pleasure is not a good enough uh, reason to harm an animal. Um, but I don't think the fact that we could accidentally step on an ant means that we shouldn't leave our house. Um, I think uh, that because we roads and cars are important that we should keep using cars. But I think um, it's not fair that a deer that has no idea what a car is, is going to get hit by a car. So us humans should figure out how to fence them off into the wildlife better. Um, yeah. uh, squirrels, if we, if we try everything we can, but we can't keep them out of getting hit by cars, then that's going to be kind of like the ants. And so we have to look at all these different things. I don't have a strong stance on if we need to equally share land with um, various animals. So if we, take up land and therefore animals can't be on that land. I don't have a strong stance against it. I don't have a love for the existence of animals. When people hear like a certain type of animal might go extinct, it's kind of a, a weird idea. It feels weird that they might be extinct. I don't care if an, if an animal is extinct, if every animal on earth just magically disappeared, aside from that, it's cool to see them and they're kind of cute or whatever. If they just magically disappeared, and they didn't affect the ecosystem, it wouldn't like bother me. But uh, like you, I care about the rights violations. I care about the harm being done to them. I don't like the idea of them being trapped into an area. I don't like the idea of them being um, harmed in any way. Uh, if you poke them, they bleed, they whine. Uh, we have pretty solid uh, scientific evidence that they are sentient and can feel. And so, so I, so I don't think we should do these things. So if we find out that we can survive perfectly fine in a certain size house versus another size house, if it's not reasonable to downsize your house because of how plots of land sell, then sure, it's not going to be an easy thing to do. But every time that we discover that an action of ours that is easy to do would cause less harm, hell yeah, I think we should we should focus on that and try to create legal change in the future for that as well. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with, with, like I said, like, like you said, mostly what you're saying. I, I think there is a case to be made where when we can demonstrate that there there is more harm being caused, whether it's, again, a, you know, um, because of our presence, right? Even if it's not a um, not treating the animals like products or exploitation, but because of our presence, there's more animals being harmed. I think if there's a way to reduce that, I would be for that. I, I think there's empirical evidence and there's, there's a way to, you know, there's solutions to that problem. Yeah. I, I would, I would definitely be for that. Cause I, like you sound like want to be, want to cause less harm or want to 
want um, there to be less harm on the planet overall. Like if I had a choice, like I said, if I could stab my fingers and have 2,500 people die instead of 5,000 people die from car accidents, I would, you know, I would, I would, I prefer that overall. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I think um, I agree with most of that. I think we draw, you know, similar lines. I think your line, I think you are more focused on the suffering. Whereas for me, like, again, on that line, if there's one scenario where animal or where individuals are the resource, are the product, are given no rights, but there's less suffering versus mm -hmm. the other line where they are given rights, they are being affected because of human presence on the planet, whether it's homes, crops, whatever, but there's more suffering, I would still view the moral obligation as, uh, or I would still view it as a moral obligation to prevent the, or to stop the direct use, the direct um, um, rights violations of animals versus them being affected by our presence. That would be a mm. prep that I would say, you know what, if there's a way to reduce this, let's try and do that because overall less suffering, overall less death is better on based on my values. Gotcha. Let me ask you one more question. Well, so one thing, um, my buddy, Michael, who I talked to earlier on this topic, he said he would love to chat with you about the, the empirics of, uh, the, uh, crop crop issue. And um, I, that'd be a really cool talk. I think maybe the three of us should just uh, have that talk. Um, but also, um, there are some comments in here that people are asking about sure. my, ve my vegan status. And I just wanted to comment on it really quick because I saw something about meat eater stuff. I think the most the, the main thing that's being said in here is referring to my eating of bivalves. Um, do, you, do you have a stance on bivalves, like a short? Um, I'm agnostic. Of? Yeah, so okay. I... Uh, I I do not want to consume any animals. I don't want to use animals as resources at all. Now, again, um, I'm agnostic. I would love to see evidence. I've seen good evidence that they may be sentient. I know 2AM Vegan, when he was active, when they were active, um, they did a great video on how bivalves are uh, most likely sentient. But I've also oh. heard a lot of people uh, imply because they have such a like basic nervous system or, you know, uh, basic brain structure that they aren't. So I'm agnostic. Uh, I, I want to apply the precautionary principle as much as possible. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and I, I don't eat them often. I actually don't find the taste to be enjoyable at all, but, um, but I, I'm kind of agnostic as well, but I lean towards until I get the information. I'm not too worried, especially mm -hmm. considering, um, how much suffering there is elsewhere. Um, so there's that. And then the other thing that some people might be referring to, which was mentioned for the first time yesterday, was uh, about four months ago, I got some health news, um, basically my blood levels, uh, L uh, my LDL levels, and um, some various different things involving heart stuff. Uh, not connected to veganism, but just connected to being... Um, overweight <laughs> at the time. I actually lost a lot of weight since then, like four months ago. But anyways, uh, the doctor told me by the time I'm 45, I'll have a heart attack if I don't change my wow. diet drastically. I'm 38 right now. And, uh, but mostly it was just eating unhealthy garbage. And, um, but on my search for, um, eating well, I, I decided that I was basically just going to eat, um, the healthiest whole foods there are. I eat two cups of kale every day. I eat a cup of berries every day. Um, but I dabbled in a little of fish products, um, uh, during those couple months of figuring out because it kept coming up no matter where I was looking, the, uh, health benefits of fish. And so, um, I had salmon a couple times and I had, um, sardines once. Um, I didn't like the taste of any of it. I didn't feel morally fine with any of it. Not that I am too familiar with, um, the the studies on it but i feel pretty s certain that fish are sentient and i'm not in favor of consuming them but i do care more about health than i care about animals but i also don't know if i ever plan on consuming a fish ever again and uh so i've been aside from bivalves fully vegan for over nine years now and then because of a health scare i dabbled in a little fish and um i i don't know if i'm going to um ever have fish again but uh my morals are where they are and i have no interest in going like oh because i had this fish i'm going to start eating cows and chickens or whatever so anyways um uh it's perfectly fine for somebody to call me not vegan or 
only have been vegan for a month or something instead of nine years if they want. Um, but uh, for me, n- talks like these and spreading the messages about moral and good um good actions that we humans should do is what it's about. So I don't mind the fact that somebody knows that I consume little fish anyways. Um, no, and transparency is important. You know, like I, I definitely would view that as not vegan, but mm-hmm. um, I appreciate the, you know, the honesty, obviously considering you, you are on YouTube. Um, and yeah, I mean, from what I've seen, um, like, from what I've seen of your content, I think I watched your debate with vegan gains. Um, mm-hmm. I, I watched it a long time ago, so I don't exactly remember. But um, you do – it seems like, at least, uh, you are on more of the side of, like, reducitarianism, welfareism. A lot of your arguments are leaning in that direction. And I get your I, – from what I understand, and again, correct me if I miss uh, – mischaracterize your position or something but um i get that from your perspective you think that that is a better way of reducing rights violations or appealing to more people who could then reduce their consumption which then ultimately is better i guess over you know better than than it would be you know if they were full-on consuming so i i kind of get that Mm -hmm. i do think the message has to be kind of all or nothing Um, And then where, how people reduce, you know, we could help people with tips to reduce, tips to eliminate products, tips to transition. But I think the message should be all or nothing. So, but, um, but yeah, and I get, I mean, health scare, I mean, you know, I always say like, you know, if eating animal products extended your life, I would still say it's, it's uh, immoral. Mm -hmm. Um, But obviously preventing a heart attack at 45 that I can understand the panic there that you may have been feeling, but um, as somebody who knows nutrition decently well, um, I would say that there is nothing in animal products that you should be consuming or would help you with your heart issue. In fact, I would say that fish probably is, is not going to help the heart, the LDL issue. Cause it's, especially if it's like fatty or fish. Um, Mm -hmm. I would say that, um, you know, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, and, eating things lower in saturated fat, trying to get that saturated fat intake as low as possible. That would help your LDL unless you have like a genetic thing. But, um, but again, not a doctor. So don't, don't take any. For sure. For sure. Well, it was actually pretty cool. So my LDL, I don't know if you're familiar with LDL too much, but, uh, it was at 212, which anything Mm -hmm. over two is, um, considered scary. And wow. LDL was at 212. Yeah, no, that's high. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. And in three months, because I had my blood tested three months later, I essentially – are you familiar with Brian Johnson? Um, the uh, the guy who's trying to reverse age or whatever. That guy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, who happens to be vegan, which is pretty cool. Uh-huh. Um, but anyways, um, I essentially, without knowing but later found out about him, I – doing my health research – I formed a diet of a food of food that I ate the exact same meals every single day for that three months, basically, Mm -hmm. Um, aside from the little dabbling with the fish I talked about. Um, And it ended up being almost the exact same diet as him. So it was like a. a, a, Yeah, he does like the smoothie and then like the vegetables and like kale and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, And I don't do it all blended up like him. But yeah, I'll I'll make my own thing with like lentils and kale and all these Mm -hmm. different things. And it'll be the exact same calories, exact same food, same thing every single day. And anyways, I got my LDL down from 212 to 101. Nice. And yeah, yeah, the doctor said he had never seen that in his entire Mm -hmm. practice. Uh, I don't think it was because of the fish or anything. Um, And I I don't, I, again, uh, anyways, uh, not that I, you know. um, Yeah, I can almost (laughs) assure you again, I'm not, uh, there's no way for this is speculation, but I can almost, I would speculate that it's absolutely not to do with the fish. I mean, if you go from Mm -hmm. eating more processed foods, foods higher in saturated fat, um, which I'm assuming to get your LDL over 200 had to be the case. Um, yeah. Oh, I mean, I was eating vegan donuts, vegan cakes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Impossible and a lot burgers, of them, nonstop. Yeah, and a lot of them the use breads. coconut oil, which is super high in saturated fat. So yeah, going yeah. from that to more whole foods to a diet lower in saturated fat, um, that would be like my biggest advice, regardless of like processed food, whole food, whatever my biggest mm-hmm. like thing that, or what I try and go off of. And again, not a trained professional, so don't take the, it's not medical advice, but what yeah. I go off of is, um, low sodium, low saturated fat intake from there. 
Yeah. Like the amount of sugar I consume, because I'm at a healthy weight, it doesn't really concern me too much. Um, how processed the food is doesn't really concern me too much. Um, it's really low sodium or like a healthy amount of sodium and um, low saturated fat, like as low as I could get it. That's really my only concern. And, and that should help with our number one killer at the very least. So, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And, and maybe we can talk about, um, health at a different time too. But, um, the, the last question I did want to ask you aside from mm-hmm. those couple notes was, um, maybe a hard hypothetical to answer, but, um, just as far as rights violations go, let's say, um, somebody was in the forest and they were wanting to build a shelter and just live in the forest. And every tree in that forest had an animal living in it. Like you could just see like whether it was birds or squirrels or whatever, um, whether they just popped out to do Disney princess style, like chirping that they live there, every tree had an animal living in it. Do you, do you think, um, as far as, so when you look at rights violations, it's kind of hard to look at like property rights. Cause that's more of a, a yeah. man, a man-made thing, but how would you view like a natural property rights of sorts? Um, where it, if somebody wanted to cut down a tree and build a house out of that tree, or let's say somehow they magically had the stuff to build it, um, that they didn't need to cut down the tree to build, but they they needed to cut down it to use that that spot or something. Mm-hmm. Do you think? Do you view the human need for shelter because humans could know that they'd be less likely to die from storms or whatever? To where if you're doing it for this extreme need, and even though it's an immoral act, would you personally find it justified to cut down that tree? Yeah. Again, it gets tricky because. Um when we're talking about individuals who cannot be reasoned with, right. Um, We're not even talking about killing those animals. We're talking about taking their essentially their home and having them relocate, I guess, in this example, um, maybe, but, um, but yeah, I put in the human uh, perspective, right. Let's say there is a human who is living in a home on a piece of land, that land, they, they have no way of comprehending property rights. They have no way of communicating or reasoning. And, again, in our society, we, we, we find it beneficial for the vast majority of people to have a concept of property rights, to have a concept of rights in general. So that way we're civilized. So that way we can make deals, trade, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So in that scenario where somebody had, let's say purchased or uh, acquired the rights to that land. And again, they can't, there's no way for them to like move them out or, you know, reason with them or anything, that person is staying there. I mean, again, it gets tricky. I would say that to just, um, I guess, uh, make that person homeless or potentially kill them um, is messed up. Like I wish that didn't have to happen. But mm-hmm. uh, at the end of the day, again, we, we have a concept of property rights. We have systems in place. Um, I don't, see it as a moral obligation for the person to not build their home on that land and make that person homeless. I do think it would be preferable if there was a way for them not to, or like, it would be great if they, if they could both live on that land. But mm-hmm. yeah, I think in that scenario, similar with the animal case, um, the per, I, I would say that um, because the animal isn't the resource, right? I, I don't think we can, we are violating those animals rights because those animals have no concept of property rights. They, they don't have, you know, so I would say that that's kind of where I land on that. Yeah. Gotcha. That's a cool answer. Um, awesome. Well, thanks for chatting. Sorry. I kept you so long and, uh, let's set up no, another no, talk cool. cause, um, I think we both like the idea of challenging each other's, um, stances to the point where we can, uh, pinpoint it the best as possible. So yeah, no, it was an interesting conversation. Uh, and if you have any other, you know, prompts or propositions, yeah, definitely reach out. And um, definitely, uh, I don't, you know, take it easy on the vegan cake, all right, for your LDL and for the uh, yeah, for yeah. the what we discussed here. So, but uh, yeah, but yeah, thanks for having me, Carson. This is cool, and uh, thanks to everybody who's watching or whatever. So, yeah, cool. cool. All right, sounds good. Take care, man. You too, man.